A recipe for oat, a recipe for oatmeal cookies calls for two cups of flour for every three cups of oatmeal. How much flour is needed for a big batch of cookie that uses nine cups of oatmeal? So let's think about what they're saying. They're saying two cups of flour. So two cups of flour, two cups of flour, flour for every three cups of oatmeal. For every three cups of oatmeal. For every three cups of oatmeal. So for every three cups of oatmeal. For every three cups of oatmeal. And so they're saying how much flour is needed for a big batch of cookies that uses nine cups of oatmeal. So now we're going to a situation. Now we're going to go to a situation where we are using nine cups of oatmeal. Let me write it this way. Nine cups of oatmeal. Nine. And I'll show you a couple of different ways to think about it, and whatever works for you, that's, that, that works. So first of all, the one way to think about it, so we're wondering, we're going to say, look, we know if we have three cups of oatmeal, we should use two cups of flour. But what we don't know is if we have nine cups of oatmeal, how many cups of flour do we use? That's what they're asking us. But if we're going from three cups of oatmeal to nine cups of oatmeal, how much more oatmeal are we using? Well, we're using three times more oatmeal, right? We're multiplying. We're multiplying by three. Three cups of oatmeal to nine cups of oatmeal, we're using three times the oatmeal. Well, if we want to use flour in the same proportion, we have to use three times the flour. So then we're also going to have to multiply the flour times three. We're going to multiply the flour times three, so we're going to have to use six cups of flour. We're going to have to use six cups of, ignore that question mark, six cups of flour. Another way you could think about it, and that answers their question. That's how much flour we need for a big batch of cookies that uses nine cups of oatmeal. The other thing is you could set up a proportion. You could say, you could say two cups, two cups of flour over three cups of oatmeal, three cups of oatmeal is equal to question mark, and I'll say instead of writing question mark, I'll put a variable in there. I'll say is equal to a question. Actually, let me put a question mark there, just so you really understand. Is equal to a question mark in a box. Number cups of flour, cups of flour, cups of flour over nine cups of oatmeal. Nine cups of oatmeal. And so I like this first way we did it because it's really just common sense. If we're tripling the the, the oatmeal, then we're going to have to triple. The flour to to make the recipe in the same proportion. Another way, once you set up an equation like this, is actually to do a little bit of algebra. Some people might call it cross multiplying, but that cross multiplying is still using a little bit of algebra. And I'll show you why they're really the same thing. In cross multiplication, whenever you have a proportion set up like this, people will represent will multiply the diagonals. So they'll when you multiply when you use cross multiplication, you'll say that two times nine, so two times nine must be equal to question mark times three. Must be equal to question mark times three. Must be equal to whatever is in this question mark, the number of cups of flour times three. Or we get 18. 18 is equal to whatever our question mark was, whatever our question mark was times three. So the number of cups of flowers we need to use times three needs to be equal to 18. What times three is equal to 18? You might be able to do that in your head. That is six. Or you could divide both sides by three, and you will get six. So we get question mark in a box needs to be equal to six cups of flour. Same answer we got through kind of common sense. Now, you might be wondering, hey, this cross multiplying doesn't make any intuitive sense. You know, Why does that work? If I have something set up like this, a proportion set up, why does it work that if I, if I take the denominator here and multiply it by the numerator there, that that needs to be equal to the numerator here times the denominator there? And that comes from straight up algebra. And to do that, I'm just going to rewrite this part as x, just to simplify the writing a little bit. So we have 2 over 3 is equal to, instead of that question mark, I'll write x over 9. And in algebra, all you're saying is that this quantity over here is equal to this quantity over here. So if you do anything to the what's on the left, if you want it to still be equal, if the thing on the right still needs to be equal, you have to do the same thing to it. And what we want to do is we want to simplify this so all we have on the right hand side is an x. So what can we multiply this by so that we're just left with an x, so that we've solved for x? Well, if we multiply this times 9, the 9s are going to cancel out. 
So let's multiply the right by 9. But of course, if we multiply the right by 9, we have to still multiply the left by 9. Otherwise, they still wouldn't be equal. If they were equal before being multiplied by 9, for them to still be equal, you have to multiply 9 times both sides. On the right-hand side, the 9's cancel out, so you're just left with an x. On the left-hand side, you have 9 times 2 thirds, or 9 over 1 times 2 thirds. Or this is equal to 18 over 3. And we know that 18 over 3 is the same thing as 6. So these are all legitimate ways to do it. I wanted you to understand that what I'm doing right here is algebra. That's actually the reasoning why cross multiplication works. But for a really simple problem like this, you could really just use common sense. If you're increasing the, the cups of oatmeal by a factor of 3, then increase the cups of flour by a factor of 3.